Hey y'all, this is Dan with DPS Breakdowns. In this video, we're going to analyze a powerful move from their front headlock position called the Twister. Some of you may know this move by another name, such as a Gator Roll or a Cement Mixer. Before we get into the details of the Twister, it's important to also understand the mechanics of another powerful move off the front headlock called the Cow Catcher. The reason for this is that the thread of the Cow Catcher will help set up the Twister. For both the cow catcher and the twister, the grips will be the same. One arm controlling the head at the chin, and the other on an underhook. The primary objective for both moves will also be the same, and that is to create upper body rotation as a means to break our opponent down to his hips. To perform the cow catcher from the front headlock position, we'll need to do a few things at once. One is to aggressively elevate an elbow to elbow underhook, Another is to create a perpendicular angle on our opponent. And the third is to pull down on the opponent's head while driving forward. Together, these will result in the opponent being forced over his far hip and to his back. Let's take another look at that clip of Tony Ramos performing the cow catcher. Remember, the goal is to create upper body rotation by aggressively elevating an underhook, creating a perpendicular angle, and pulling down on the opponent's head while driving forward. Here's a clip of Bo Nickel performing the same cow catcher movement. And here's Jason Nolf performing one as well. While the cow catcher can work at even the highest levels, experienced opponents can do a few things to nullify its effectiveness. One counter is to keep their underhooked elbow tight and prevent it from being elevated. Another is to post their foot on the opposite side of where the underhook is. This foot post gives the opponent a sturdier base to that direction. Notice how both of these counters make it very difficult to create upper body rotation towards the opponent's far hip. These same countermeasures, however, make the opponent vulnerable to the twister. Unlike the cow catcher, the twister does not attempt to change the angle and drive the opponent to his far hip, but rather rotates him towards the underhook side hip. This cow catcher twister combo creates a dilemma for the opponent. The harder they defend the cow catcher, the more susceptible they become to the twister. Conversely, if the opponent knows a twister may be coming, they could leave themselves exposed to the cow catcher. Creating this type of lose-lose situation for your opponent is a recipe for success for the offensive grappler. Let's take an in-depth look at how Mark Hall uses the twister to control and pin his opponents. We'll run this one all the way through and then we'll take a closer look. So you can see Hall's got that front headlock, he's got a left arm underhook. And he's gonna roll towards the underhook side. Gets the opponent to the bat, his back, and eventually gets the pin. So a couple things I want to note here. Number one is the defense here. So notice how as the opponent goes to shoot in, Hall's keeping his hands low, he's down blocking. And this is going to give him inside position on both sides. It'll allow him to get the chin control with his right arm, so that front headlock position, and his left arm is going to be able to easily get the underhook. Here. So just real quick on that, remember the head, hands, and hips, lines of defense. Here the hands are going to down block, inside position on both sides, and now he's in a dominant position. So the opponent is going to actually kind of concede the position himself. He's going to go down to the mat here. And he, the, the opponent does what a lot of people will do in the situation where they have their head is stuck in the front headlock and then the opponent also has an underhook. There's kind of this intuitive um, sense of the cow catcher. They have to, as you, as you wrestle through the years, you've encountered this move a lot. So you see the opponent has his left foot posted and he's got his right elbow kind of clamped down here. And this is going to make it difficult, if not impossible, for Hall to break him down, break his opponent down to his opponent's left hip here. Um, but this does, as we've talked about, this opens up 
the twister. So Hall's gonna look to roll to his left. So he's not gonna get an angle like he would for a cow catcher. He's gonna stay head on for now. And so one of the keys to this move is that the opponent's gonna be posted on their knee to the underhook side. If they're posted on both feet, it gets much more difficult. But when they're on the knee, which you can see here, the opponent has a right knee posted, this is when it becomes available. So you can see Hall's going to drop to first his left shoulder and then eventually he goes flat here. And what this does really, I think a big key to this move, and you can see it here, how he's gonna trap his opponent's right elbow. So Hall's gonna use his left shoulder, head and chest all kind of together to wedge underneath the opponent's tricep here. And that's gonna create the upper body rotation I keep talking about. So that's that's a big key to this move is it's not just about trapping it so it obviously the person won't be able to post the hand out. That's important, but it also kind of caves that elbow in and makes it very difficult for them to resist that upper body rotation. So as Hall generates that momentum, he's gonna start rolling through. He's pulling with that front headlock grip and the opponent, you can see how he's hopping here to try to stay up, but that upper body rotation is eventually gonna rotate him down to his right hip here. So just one more time on that. Hall's gonna quickly fall to his side, traps the arm, caves it in, creates that big upper body rotation. So you get the elbows pointed 12 to six, on it, like a hands on a clock, and eventually the hips will go here. And so a couple details to, to stick this pin. You can see immediately the opponent tries to belly down here. So he tries to thread his right leg through, get both knees to the floor, but Hall does a really good job elevating that shoulder control. So that same grip he had with the underhook earlier, he keeps it, he's gonna elevate, pull up on that arm. He still has the head control even though you can't really see it too well from this angle. And the opponent just can't, he's not able to belly down in that direction. So now he's gonna try to do it the other way but Hall, again, that underhook can work a couple different ways. Before he was using it, Hall was using it to elevate. Now he's just using um, his head and that underhook arm to kind of to keep that arm trapped so the opponent's not able to turn to his right this time. And with nowhere to go, he can't turn one way, he can't turn the other way. The final detail here, Hall's gonna just elevate the head makes it very difficult to bridge at this point, and it's gonna be a pin. Let's see that one one more time in full speed. Here's another clip. And the same result. Pretty similar to the last one. The front headlock's gonna come off the opponent's missed shot. The opponent shoots in. Paul's gonna sprawl. Gets his hands to the inside here. So again, the, one of the keys that I wanna emphasize is that this move really works effectively when the opponent's knee on the underhook side is on the mat. So if you actually look right now, it's a little difficult to see, but the opponent's right leg his, uh, he's got a foot post, the knee is off the mat. But watch, as soon as he puts the knee down, right here, the right knee is now on the mat. Hall knows he can hit the move at this point. He's gonna roll through. This time he doesn't even fall to his left hip, he goes straight to his butt here. But same idea, he keeps that chin grip, traps the opponent's right elbow, creates that good upper body rotation, rolls him right through here. See how Hall quickly does a hip heist himself, gets his hips back to the floor, pointed to the floor. And the beauty of this move is that as soon as you, as soon as you get back to this position here for Hall, he's got a really tight, really tight control as the pin. He still has the, basically the same grips. He still has the front headlock, chin strap grip. And then he's got a, a, an underhook with his left arm here. And so the opponent's in big trouble quickly. And that's gonna be it. So really more of the same here. Again, the opponent's gonna shoot. Hall does a great job keeping his hands inside, gets his grips. 
He usually does this off of the same grip, so right arm, chin strap, left arm underhook. I have seen him do it once on the opposite side though. Uh, but usually this setup here, he's gonna roll right through. Here. And watch how he uses his, his feet to hip heist really effectively. So he rolls to his hip, goes to his butt. Now watch his Hall, Hall's right foot in this case. He's gonna aggressively push himself. A big push, gets his hips pointed to the floor. Just keeps the grips, elevates the head, keeps his underhook. You can see how he's kind of posting his own head on the floor um, to kind of withstand the bridge as well. So you guys are getting the idea here. One thing, so this one, Hall's actually gonna do this, do a snap down himself here. So see how he snaps with his left hand, he's gonna feed to his right. Just a simple snap down. Opponent's gonna go to the floor. And again, opponent's on both knees, the green light to go. Hall rolls through. And I like this clip, because look at right here, you can see, get a great view of the opponent's right elbow. And this really emphasizes how much that elbow is caved in here. So when Hall rolls through, he's effectively trapping that elbow, but he's also caving it inside, which is creating that upper body rotation, which ultimately creates that hip rotation, which is what we want here. Opponent's hips go over. More of the same from Hall here. We'll see that one, one more time, full speed. I really like this clip. So here Hall's gonna be in the top position on the mat. He's gonna get that near wrist ride, left hand's gonna grab his opponent's left wrist, and he's bringing his opponent's wrist behind his opponent's back. He's gonna allow his opponent to build up, and Hall's gonna keep that wrist with the left hand and bring his right arm underneath for an underhook here. Now what I really like about this clip is that Hall's using the twister, kind of how I talked about earlier, how it combos with the uh, cow catcher. Now this isn't quite a cow catcher because Hall actually doesn't have a front headlock, but it's the same kind of idea where he's got this underhook elevated with his right arm here, and his opponent's gonna compensate. Whenever you feel like you're getting tilted to one side, you're gonna try to uh, adjust your base and compensate the other direction so you don't get tipped over. And this is what leads to the twister to work. So here, the opponent's worried about getting rolled over his own right hip with the, with the underhook that Hall has. So you can see like right here, for example, the opponent's using the foot post so that he's not able to get tilted to that direction. He's circling the other way and Hall's gonna use that against him. So Hall's gonna switch that chin grip, rolls through. Here's, a, here's another angle of just the roll. So he rolls to his butt, keeps that chin. And you can see how Hall right here has the underhook. He maintains it, quickly gets, gets his hips pointed to the floor and gets the pin. So Hall's gonna get to the front headlock position here with a little chop. You guys see how he forces the opponent's hands to the floor. Good moment, good opportunity to get the front headlock position. So he immediately gets the chin grip, gets his underhook with his left. 
Now his opponent comes to the mat here. So again, just I keep emphasizing this, but watch the opponent's right knee because that's the key to this to at least the initial entry into the move. Right now the knee's on the floor, but the opponent's gonna raise it up. You can see as he raises it up, Hulk kind of snaps him back down to the mat again. So now the right knee's on the floor again. But the opponent comes up yet again. And Hall brings him down another time. And this time, as soon as Hall sees it come to the floor, he's going. So a quick, tight roll through. Upper body rotation creates the lower body rotation. Keeps his underhook, keeps his chin strap grip. Gets the fall. We've got a pretty good angle here. So watch the opponent's right knee. It's gonna raise up. Hall brings it back down. Very tight roll. So remember, you want to be tight so that you trap the opponent's elbow. Notice too how Hall does such a good job of keeping the head with him. So he, he doesn't want the opponent to be a lot higher up than him. He wants to really break the opponent's posture as he rolls through. Make it easier to rotate him. Brings him through, quickly gets his hips to the floor. Gets the finish. Let's just see that one more time, full speed. And that will do it for today's video. As always, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so through Patreon at the link below. Thanks for watching.